from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. It's the Cube, covering VTUG Winter Warmer 2018, presented by Silicon Angle. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE's coverage of VTUG Winter Warmer 2018. Happy to welcome to the program, first time guest, Kevin Kotecki, who is the Vice President of Sales at Igneous Systems. Kevin, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, so, so uh, we've, we've been talking to Igneous since we, really the early days. Mm -hmm. we, we've known some of the founders of the team. Um, before we get into it, tell us a little bit about your background, how long you've been with Igneous, and mm -hmm. kind of your day-to-day your -day activities there. Yeah, so I've been with Igneous for three years now, so very early stage, uh, came in pre-product, pre-revenue, been working with our earliest stage prospective customers and our earliest customers from day one. Uh, so uh, I've had the pleasure over the last few months of building out the sales organization more broadly, the marketing organization growing as well, as we have achieved that product market fit that every startup's looking for and uh, going out and solving those problems at scale across the country and having the feet on the street to help with that. Yeah, uh, you know, it's interesting. We talk a lot of, on this program about, you know, these user groups, they're great for the users to get education. It's also a great place for hiring. I've had, helped lots of friends at mm -hmm. this specific event, uh, you know, talked to a number of companies that are like, oh yeah, we're hiring SEs. Everybody's hiring SEs. Yes, and I'm indeed. I'm sure you're probably doing some interviews. We are, uh, yeah. Wh wh while you're here. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it's also, love to, I, I love to watch the, the maturing of startups. Mm -hmm. A number of companies I met here uh, at the first time, Igneous has been supportive of this event for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what, what brings Igneous, you know, what are kind of so the kind of key objectives coming to an event like this? Yeah, so with, uh, with VTUG's Winter Warmer, you know, it's an opportunity to see uh, customers, first and foremost, and interact with the local uh, Boston companies that are here that fit the profile and have the problems that we solve, but it's also an opportunity to see our partners and to uh, have visibility in the community and show that support of the, of the local business community as well. All right, so let's talk about Igneous. So, you know, at this show, it's the changing dynamics of what's happening in the world of virtualization, mm -hmm. what's happening in cloud. Um, Igneous sits in those spaces, uh, and, you know, how does it differentiate itself from this massive market of, you know, cloud and storage and everything that's going out there? Yeah, so good question. The at a high level, what we do is we help organizations manage their unstructured data wherever it may be uh, when that unstructured data is at scale and, and begins to break traditional paradigms for doing so. And um, the specific problems that we solve uh, start with data protection day one. It's a great way to uh, help customers get insight into their full suite of unstructured file data uh, and build an index around that that's, that's extensible and powers our other services like archive, uh, like end user search and restore, and, and also feeds into our policy engine that helps customers uh, tier data to the public cloud and specifically to um, cost appropriate cloud products like Amazon Glacier, like Azure Archive. And um, so that intersection that we sit in between cloud and storage and all of that is really around um, pr pr delivering the entire experience as a service and solving day one very difficult data protection problems. Yeah, um, we talk about things like scale. Can you quantify for us? You know, what's what's kind of the low bar for your customers? How, you know, where does it start and and how big is big? Yeah, so for us, you know, a minimum starting point would be a couple, a few hundred terabytes of file data. Okay, which at, at, it's not that big, right? Yeah, and in today's world, not so much. Um, but it certainly does bring clarity to the type of customers that, that we can help. Um, and in, and it's really, we're not focused on structured data, right? We believe that there are a lot of uh, great solutions out there for protecting databases and, and a virtualized infrastructure, and that's not what we do. Uh, we partner with those folks. And, um, and, and as far as what, how big is big? You know, our largest customers are have approximately 100 petabytes of file data, and so approaching kind of the top end of what um, uh, customers have still on premise today. Okay, so great. So it sounds like you you can start with. I mean, most customers are going to have that kind of data. I mean, do, do you find maybe it's because it's unstructured? There's plenty of companies that you know might not uh, kind of fit in your bucket, and then y you've got plenty of headroom for scale, is what I'm hearing. Correct. Yeah, and architecturally, that 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 headroom is built in day one. I think the the focus from a customer standpoint on unstructured data is uh, if we if we quantify and qualify uh, what that data 
is and where it comes from, it's really machine generated data at scale, it's application generated data at scale. And so the types of industries where we're really doing well are, call it electronic design and automation, whether that's in the semiconductor space or in, or in engineering use cases, it's in media and entertainment, you know, a traditional place that uh, has large scale file data, um, it's in legal services, it's in proprietary trading, it's in all the places where um, that data exists, but then it's also in bioinformatics where genome sequencers and next generation 3D microscopes are producing those kinds of data sets. And so not every organization is in that boat today, right? And so uh, we're really working at machine scale as opposed to human scale data creation. Yeah, and, and really goes back, I think of, you know, when object storage was first discussed, it was you, you described it really well, kind of the people data versus, you know, machine data. All the industries that you went through, um, you know, it, it's the, there's just the growth portfolio that yeah. I have to do things, um, and we look at, you know, how do I take that from being, oh my gosh, this is a challenge, to uh, how do I make an opportunity? How do I leverage that data? How do Absolutely. I use it? Uh, um, it's yeah. about monetizing the data, yeah. right? And if it's just simply um, data that you're storing, then there's less incentive um, to invest in platforms that allow the extensibility of that data um, to, to come through and, and be integrated into other applications, other use cases that then can be monetized, right? Um, and if we come back to some of the core problems that we really solve and, and get, us, uh, get, get us to demonstrate the value of the product and of the approach to customers, it, it does indeed start with data protection day one, right? And so many of our customers today um, are protecting their data in a, in a traditional paradigm of whether that be NDMP to tape, or just working within backup windows where the goal as an IT organization is to not impact your end users and their ability to create the type of data that they can then monetize, right? So whether that's an engineering organization uh, that's writing code or creating designs, um, whatever it may be, the goal is to be behind the scenes, right? And so when the scale of data creation, when the density of the file data that is being created um, creates challenges to those traditional architectures, whether that be around metadata management or some other um, you know, challenge of scale, uh, that's where we come in and we shine. And so we start day one focusing on customers' hardest problems as it relates to file data at scale and protecting it. And then once that data is on our system, the power of that platform, the power of the microservices driven architecture that we've spoken about here on past interviews, the power of the um, extensible um, you know, compute context, if you will, that can then integrate into other applications and be leveraged for also very tangible things like archive and reducing your spend on primary storage. Um, and also integrating with the cloud, right? Yeah, Kevin, one of the things we, we've looked at is inside an organization, a lot of times, th this paradigm shift also goes with, you know, organizationally, who owns this? When I, right. I think about <coughs> a lot of the applications, it would be that application owner that has the problem, Indeed. but isn't connected necessarily with uh, the storage admin or virtualization right. admin or cloud architect. How, how, how does Igneous, how do you get involved there and how, how do you work, help companies work through some of those organizational dynamics? Yeah, so that's been one of the most satisfying elements over the last year or so of, of successfully solving customer problems has been actually seeing, seeing the closer marriage of those three entities uh, within organizations. So again, the application owner, the backup or dis disaster recovery owner, um, and the storage owner. And so uh, the most tangible example I can give is in a world where uh, backups were impacting end users, in this case an, an engineering organization that would experience latency in their application and then the work they're trying to do, they're, they're, uh, traditionally their first order, um, or I guess their first solution is was to contact the uh, backup team and say, hey, are you running a backup? If so, kill it because you're impacting my ability to do my job. Um, and then the storage folks, of course, are experiencing pain around trying to manage the scale of the, arc the infrastructure to support, um, to support that engineering organization. And so in our approach, we don't impact the end users in any way. And, so, and, and we provide continuous and automated uh, protection, which allows those uh, data protection team members to focus on other things that are higher order priorities than sitting there managing, actively managing a backup window or a backup itself. That's, that's something software does for them now. And the end users no longer complain and, and therefore their, their daily interaction with IT is, as it relates to data protection is less colored by the IT uh, impacting their ability to do their job through, through the data protection uh, approaches that they're using today. Yeah, uh, when it comes to kind of some high level data protection, secondary storage, there's a lot of players out there and 
you know, many of them, it's like, it's not, it's like, oh, data domain, you know, very different from, you know, a rubric or cohesity. Um, wh where does Igneous fit in kind of the, the spectrum of what's going on? You know, what are kind of some of the kind of, you know, companies that you're running up against that make sense for you as opposed to which ones they were just in the wrong conversation here? Right, so the, clear line of delineation between us and most of the other new entrants and traditional entrants in the field is that we're only focused on file data. We believe that the growth of unstructured data is, is, is unbounded and will continue to be unbounded and will break traditional architectural paradigms. And so that's the problem that we're specifically focused on is how to help customers manage and protect that. Therefore, we're not focused on protecting structured data, databases and VMs. That's not our point of entry. Um, but what that does do within that space is create a lot of opportunities for partnership, where our architectural approach is unique and uh, is something that is very difficult to pull off if your day one focus is on protecting virtual machines. It's not easy for you to step up to the plate and protect two, three petabytes of file data, right? And so that's an opportunity for best of breed solutions where the customer can um, have the best data protection and two vendors in place for those types of use cases. Okay, uh, Kevin, I want to give you the final word. Maybe do you have, you know, customer story, you talked a little bit up the organizational piece, but you know, wh 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 what's a customer story that you could uh, relate that people might, you know, find interesting. Yeah, so being in Boston, having Boston be such a hotbed of bioinformatics, the um, one of our uh, recent customers is uh, leveraging new um, 3D microscope technology to do very important research on, um, you know, the human body and disease and and things of that nature, and that produces you know petabyte scale data uh, even once it's been processed. And so what we're helping them do is both protect that and minimize their cost uh, of implementing primary storage, minimize their cost around uh, data protection, and not have to implement or, or put uh, IT folks in play to manage that whole process. It's all very automated in this deployment. But then also, mo more, even more importantly, is from a collaborative standpoint, uh, they leverage us to tier to the cloud to then uh, move that data and share that data with their other collaborating um, investigators. And then uh, also meet grant requirements of publishing their findings in a in a publicly available downloadable format. And so that end-to-end -end ability to, to provide a solution for customers that have unique challenges in creating large-scale um, file data is just has been really satisfying. All right, well, Kevin Kotecki, appreciate all the updates. As we've been saying uh, for the last couple of years, data is at the center of it and it needs to change from that kind of you know, challenges around data to huge opportunities out there. Congrats on all the success. Look Thank forward you. to Thank getting you all very the much. updates. Appreciate it. Well, lots more coverage here at the VTUG 2018. I'm Stu Miniman, you're watching theCUBE.